Welcome to the Demand Gen Summit. My name's Steve. I'm head of sales here at Signals, and I am thrilled to be joined once again with my good friend, David Delaney. David, how you doing? Steve, I'm doing great. I'm just honored to be uh, here at the summit and excited to talk with you about this. This is going to be great. I feel like if we go more than uh, two or three months without doing some sort of webinar together, uh, something's just wrong with the world. So <laughs> glad to have you back here. So still still see you're working on the beard. Yeah. But uh, but one of uh, these yeah. days, I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> Well, tell tell a little bit about yourself. Give you some background for those who haven't met or uh, or had the pleasure of, of hearing from you before, and and we'll go from there. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, at Tenbound, we have been knee deep in the tech sales industry for going on seven years now, and uh, monitoring all the different changes that have taken place and trying to stay on top of this this explosion of tech tools and different solutions that are coming out to support um, salespeople. And, um, you know, just in the last three or four months, it's been amazing to see the, the, the uh, you know, explosion of tools and new processes that have come out around the generative uh, AI capabilities for salespeople. So th that's really what we're focused on right now to try to make sense of, of all these these new solutions and and help our our customers, you know, navigate this this landscape. Yeah, I, I want to take a step back just for a second and talk about uh, maybe just kind of lay a foundation of what's kind of caused this um, this this push into now AI. I mean, I, I remember uh, when AI was first mentioned. Uh, when I heard it first mentioned corporately, it was like, wait, I don't, I don't really can say that. People are going to think that it's something out of the Terminator. You know, they're all nervous about it. What does this mean? And now it's like, great, everybody's playing with it. My kids are playing with it. My mom's playing with it. What, you know, I, I'm looking at kind of what the economy is doing in tech, for example, um, and and people are are trying to button down the hatches. How much of an impact? What kind of an impact does do you think that's kind of had? on uh on what we're going through right now what we're seeing yeah you know it's interesting because if you think about uh product-led growth which has been a big topic lately it essentially lets you kind of go on and try out the product start to get some value and and you know integrate it and then if you're ready you can go ahead and put in your credit card or start talking to salespeople. And I, I think that was the that was the killer app for AI in that when chat GPT came out, it went from sort of a an abstract concept for people to all of a sudden I can jump on, I can use this thing for free. And the value is tremendous. I mean, if you haven't had a chance to just go in and mess around with chat GPT, it's mm. it's really startling how uh the, you know amazing the the technology is and it's i'm sure that it was there before but it's just we 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 weren't uh able to jump in and start using it and and now you know it's sort of the genies out of the bottle and mm -hmm. you know it's 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 uh i used to say okay people were very concerned is ai going to take the job of a salesperson and and uh you know are we all going to be out of work you know in the next 6 months I used to say we're not there yet. It's it's we're ten years from that point or or more, and hopefully I'll be retired. But by that point, um, <laughs> but um, now with with being able to go in and look at what's what's possible, it, it, you know we we should be nervous <laughs> because you know there are some amazing uh, technologies that are being developed. I do think that there's still a a value in having someone needs to drive it. Right. The mm -hmm. software is, you know, we talk about artificial intelligence. It's probably a little bit of a misnomer at this point. I mean, what chat GPT is doing, it's consuming massive amounts of data and it's good at kind of spitting back some, some answers based off of that. Um, and it does some amazing things. I, I, I started off, didn't know what to do with it. It's like you give them the keys to the car and then where do you go? Um, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, I started to hey, write an email for me that does this. All right, now write it in the voice of uh, Jack Sparrow from uh, from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, right? And um, and 
you know, it, 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 that was kind of cool. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I was trying to figure out this formula in Excel. Uh, I was trying to do the spreadsheet. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, all right, well, let's see if we can throw out to, to chat GPT. I threw it in chat GPT. Hey, write me an Excel formula that does this and this and this and this and this. And it came back pretty close. Mm. I was like, oh, well, make it so it does this and this. And then it changed it. It's like, oh, you can iterate with it. That's new. That's cool. And then it, it ended up, I, I needed to refine a little bit and got to work. Um, but I think that if you're just using chat GPT for like, write me an email that does this. I mean, th there are some issues with it, right? I mean, there, there's, um, that, that's great. I don't think that's the, the end all be all. Um, I think what's really cool is people are using that substructure, that GPT-4 substructure, as well as the other tools that are out there to build these other platforms that do some really, really cool things. And you told me about a couple of those that do very specific parts of the sales process to help speed that up. So, I mean, mm -hmm. what are the, what are the trends? What are you kind of seeing out there that, that we can, we can look at? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because that one of the things that you mentioned is how it, it kind of learns. And then it, it, as you become more skilled in the prompts, like now prompts are everything. Everybody's talking about prompts. Like what were prompts, you know, just a few months ago. So if you take anything from this, become an expert in the prompts of what mm -hmm. you're actually asking the AI for, because the better that you get it at those prompts, the better results that you'll get from, from the AI, because there it's learning to be able to, to uh, produce the material that you're looking for. So, so that was, that was, that was a, you know, a big revelation. Cause if you're sitting there going, I don't know what to say to this thing to make it, make it, you know, produce the, the, the results that I need, then you get, you get stuck kind of, and you, you move on to the next thing. So it's all about the prompts and, and um, you know, the dividing out the parts of the sales process into solutions for each piece of, of that utilizing AI is why we're starting to see this big explosion in sales AI tools. Um, and it seems like every day, you know, you open your inbox and there's like five new companies that are have taken the sales process and applied AI to it. And, you know, obviously the le the legacy um, sales technology uh, companies are, are integrating AI. So it's 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 just everywhere right now. That's the big trend. The so for but as yeah, you I, well, it's it's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I was gonna say uh, there. There's. I mean, I'm getting ads for newsletters in my inbox that are specific around. Hey, keep up with all the AI trends yeah. uh, in 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 sales and marketing. Um, I think the guys who did Morning Brew have a new AI newsletter that goes out every day. Um, it, it, it's it's crazy what that, that's out there. So it really is. And, and, you know, it's interesting because I, I saw a meme today and it said, RIP the metaverse. And it was like, it, it what's happening with AI is almost like the opposite of the metaverse because it, the metaverse was, was this, this thing that that's created or what is this thing that's created. And you have to kind of go in and, 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 and utilize it to start to see value. And, and, you know, we, we might end up there at some point, but the difference with this was that, like I said, you, you just jump, jumped in, it was free and you start getting value immediately. And it's like, oh my God, it, 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 it ended up in this explosion of creativity that we're seeing right now. So it's super exciting. And I, I think like you said, there's definitely, you know, three or four things that are super relevant to sales um, that, you know, we should we should dive into. I think what's been, yeah. been fascinating. So there are a couple of tools we're going to go ahead and talk about. What's been fascinating is as I've, as I've looked at these tools um, and, and, and briefly um, the, the pricing is amazing. Most of them have a free option to try it out for a while. So you can kind of get in, roll up your sleeves and try it out. And then even when they do go to paid um, and it's, it's uh, uh, it's so much cheaper than some of the software we're out there seeing. Um, it's it's really it's really pretty cool. 
That's Pretty amazing. Cool. And, and, you know, I I uh, went down to Stonestown Mall here in, in San Francisco and I got hungry. So I got a plate of, you know, barbecued uh, chicken and, and fried rice and it was 25 bucks. <laughs> right. So you look at these tools, you've got the power of what just a few years ago would have been unimaginable. Oh, yeah. And it's free for, you know, a month. And then it's like 19 bucks a month for the entry level, uh, you know, service. So, you know, the 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 fact that uh, we've got AWS and those big cloud servers and and all the tools to be able to run a company has made it so that anybody can start a company, you know, uh, yeah. quickly and start really um, leveraging all these tools for almost next to nothing. So it's, yep. it's, that's another amazing trend that we've seen. Well, let's get into it. That's what the people want to, to see or what are some of these tools, for example, that are, uh, uh, that are uh, available? What's, what's the first one you want to go ahead and talk about? Yeah, and and so Steve, the last like preamble that yeah, yeah. I have before we go into this is the way that no, it's okay. I mean, the way that I look at it is um, there's there's pieces of the puzzle that are coming together mm -hmm. in sales technology, and they're still sort of broken out into many many point solutions. But over the next few years, the way that I see it is these different pieces of the puzzle will come together into almost like a Jarvis, Iron Man, mm -hmm. you know, Jarvis type of uh, situation where SDRs, AEs, you still need the Tony Stark in the suit, but you'll really be able to um, just talk to the AI and be able to produce, you know, the content and the, the results that you're trying to get. And so right now it's, it's still in sort of the the puzzle stage. And so, mm -hmm. but there are some really exciting, we could have like five webinars on, you know, the different uh, point solutions that are part of that puzzle that are coming out. I've highlighted three and a bonus um, mm -hmm. that we could talk about. So the first one is you can actually write text. Um, and, and, and so this is, if you think about your, your marketing department and your product development and all the different people that are writing these different texts um, in order to support salespeople, you can take that into a, a, a number of tools and it'll actually create a human voice that sounds like a human voice. It doesn't sound like the old, you know, uh, voicemail <laughs> voice and, and, right. and, and, and uh, remember war games. Uh, I don't know. I'm really, would you like to play back. a game? Yes. Yeah. yeah, right. So that that old, you know, yeah. voice is gone. And so what this does is we're at like step one of being able to take written text that's been um, vetted, approved, researched. And this is exactly what marketing wants us to say and put it into a real human voice. And, and so, you know, you could see how the next iteration of this is what if this what if the customer or the prospect answers the question and now the ai is thinking and creating the human voice to match that that we're on our way to essentially automating sales yeah yeah what's what's fascinating you know in looking at, at this and, and murph.ai is an example of one mm -hmm. uh, that we've got right here uh, i remember hearing a couple of years ago that adobe could take uh, uh voice a couple of, of phrases that you use and essentially create a, a vocal font where you could type stuff out and it would, it would, even if you'd never set it before, uh, if you have enough samples perfectly, uh, uh, mimic your voice, uh, so you could hear it. Um, and it's cool to see kind of a, you know, one of the things that, that, uh, Murph does is it looks like it's, you know, it's got voice cloning where it'll do that kind of thing and make it usable. So you don't have to be, it's it's not just the uh, Hollywood studios that are doing that kind of stuff in movies, but, you know, we can do it here. Um, what's the best use case for something like uh, this text-to-speech? Yeah, I mean, if you think about uh, the the uh, voicemails, for example, if you're leaving voicemails, if you're uh, leaving a lot of different voicemails, you want to make sure that you're right along the line of the the message that that we need to put out. You could drop those all day um, in in the in in the the future iteration of this it could be uh, actually 
instead of having the 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 salesperson interacting with customers you actually just have the ai interacting with customers talking to people and mm -hmm. and um th it's gotten to the point where um you know on a, the dark side of this kind of technology is for scammers you know they're they're mm -hmm. they could call people and pretend to be like your grandma and and you know say that she needs help or something like that right and you're you're actually tricked so mm -hmm. you know think of you know if if that happens to you think of some question that only she would know um, right I do think you however, actually make this into a conversation. Yeah, I do think that as good as these are, there is still a level of empathy and a level of mm -hmm. understanding that just doesn't replace a human. Um, and, and, and I could be I could be wrong in the future. Maybe I'll turn that old guy that like, you know, back in my day, sales guys <laughs> weren't AI. But uh, yeah. I, I think there is still, you know, the way I look at sales is sales, business development, marketing. It's really about people connecting. Um, yeah. and I, I think the best way to use these tools will be that, that person to person connecting maybe, you know, for general support questions, you know, this would be great for it. Or, um, when you're first getting those, those, those first responses back, you know, this is good, um, helping to filter out. So now your sales team is spending more time really working those, those deals and doing the negotiation, the things that, that are really, um, going to be great for, for us to, to hop into. Yeah, um, definitely. And you, you know, you might have a, a research paper, a case study, there's, yeah. there's a bit of information. And uh, you know, that that uh, sending a quick recorded file with your voice, uh, and instead of having to go through and I mean, really going back, like you had to get a studio and an expensive mic and you know, the setup that you have right now. Instead, it's like, let me download this PDF into a uh, you know, a, uh, a voice memo that's in my voice and send it out to my prospects, for example. So it, yeah. it's, it's funny. We use this service called Pixingo mm -hmm. and, uh, what we can do with Pixingo is, is we take down a handwriting sample, we send it to them. And then as we send out cards, it'll actually, as we type out the message in the cards, it'll print out in our, in our handwriting. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's funny that we're essentially doing that same thing with our voice, uh, now as well. So Oh, it really is. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, the, the, the other trend that we're seeing, Steve is in content production. And that goes to how do you repurpose all the content that you've done and how do you save time in the production of, for example, sales decks, you know, how, how long does it take right now? It could take hours, you know, to make the perfect sales deck for a big company. And in yeah. one of the things that we've seen, there's one called Beautiful AI, which basically takes the 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 end result that you're trying to get to, the content that you already have on hand, and then all the different AI capabilities, and boom, you've got your sales presentation, at least draft number one in minutes mm -hmm. versus what used to take hours. Right. Yeah. No, I think uh, it's, it's right here, like looking yeah. at it, like, well, and again, there it is. Try it for 14 days, right? Yeah. Like, um, I know that writing copy in general is kind of the the bane of the existence of sales guys. Like, they want to talk to people. They don't want they don't want to write emails. Um, they're not. Uh, that's not. That's not their thing. Um, uh, it, it it it's good to be to be good at it, but you know, um, you know, it's good to see tools like this to help uh, you know build out presentations, but also you know, are there ones out there that can really help us, uh, um, you know, writing, you know, other things? I, I think you mentioned copy.ai. Yeah, definitely. And, and by the way, I just, just a disclaimer, nobody's paying me to talk about these. Uh, you can, if you want, it's, I'll give you my email, but um, these are just things that we've, we've found and we've been talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, some of the bigger um, legacy players that have been in the in the business have this as well. But Copy AI has been doing an uh, amazing job in coming up with the 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 emails, the sequences, the prompts um, that you would need in order to talk to very specific prospects about the the problem that you solve. And and you know it used to be and this when I say used to we're talking like months ago but but there was always this disconnect between 
the marketing team, should they be writing the sequences? Mm -hmm. Should it be the SDRs? Should it be the AEs? Should it be the manager? And there'd be this big, you know, um, dis discombobulation of, of what the messaging should be. Now, you know, if you can agree that um, these are going to be the prompts, these are the um, the the um, specific industries that we're going after, and this is what they're concerned about. A lot of that can be taken care of with the AI in creating the 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 sequences and uh, the different responses in in your email. I think the key is the key is uh, well, like we mentioned earlier, it's going to be those prompts. It's yeah. it's these AIs aren't um, any better than the information that we give into it. Um, and, uh, you know, um, you know, make sure, make sure as, as you're doing this content, also you're editing it, uh, to make sure that it's, it, it is exactly the messaging you want out there. What I've tend to find is these give you, these take you 80, 90% of the way, but make sure you're reviewing at least at this point, say, Hey, is this really the messaging we want to use? Do we want to tweak it here? Cause it doesn't, what, what AI doesn't understand at this point, and, and I've gone down a number of. YouTube rabbit holes and uh, and white paper rabbit holes on this is it understands uh, it, it understands hey listen when you put in a prompt like this this is a common response for something like this but it doesn't understand context um, the example that was was shared with me was um, they developed an uh, two AIs uh, two AI systems that were working together and one would generate its whole goal its its one job was generate the picture of a human face. Wasn't told what a face was, wasn't told how it worked, but generate a picture of a human face. AI2 said, compare this picture that AI1 generates to all these pictures of a human face and say and, and tell AI1 if that uh, passes as a human face or not, or if it's CG generated. And so created this loop. And uh, within uh, a scary amount of time, super fast, it went from essentially a blank screen to generating a face that is almost, uh, you know, it's CGI, uh, it's CG built, but you can't tell it from a photograph. Um, you can, uh, and, and it's fascinating, but those AIs can't tell you, for example, you know, it, what makes up a human face. It can't tell you what the nose is or what eyes are. It just knows, hey, it needs a shape that's similar to here. And if it's got these things, guess that's a face, great. So it doesn't know that context. And so one of the things that we bring to as humans, which is thus the prompts, is that context of what everything means. So that's why those, those yeah. prompts are so crucial. Yeah, yeah. And as, as you're thinking about this, you, you think, I, I hope, hopefully it's not learning to the point where we can't like pull the plug on it because at some point, I don't want to go we've down all seen those movies. Hole, but uh, we've all seen the Terminator, right? Um, you know, the, it's, it's thinking. So we need some kind of button that says, okay, we, we, we have the context we're in charge. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, um, AI back off a little bit there, buddy. Fortunately, I think ChatGPT and GPT-4 does have some some safety things in place. For example, if you ask it, it's if you're asking, for example, uh, who won the Kentucky Derby last week, it's not going to know because its data set is is older. And I think some of that's on purpose. Um, so that uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, there are there are a couple safety features. You can't ask it to to say uh, not safe for work things or explicit things or offensive things. It's it's actually going to turn you down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we, we haven't tried that, but <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. I pushed, I pushed it as far as I could just to see, just to see. <laughs> what it would do. I, I, I took um, Snoop Dogg song, gin and juice. And I said, convert this into a nursery rhyme <laughs> just because I wanted to see if it would do it. And it did it. But then I took a nursery rhyme. I was like, convert this into Snoop Dogg, the voice of gin and juice. And it's like, I don't know that I can do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, one thing that that we've seen, I mean, we've seen this explosion over the over the past few years of automated messaging. And it's like everyone's email box is filled with hundreds of automated messaging. But um, we, we haven't up to this point been able to figure out how do you personalize something 
and bring that context at a point where you can reach out to enough people to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And so data gathering is one of the things that the that that AI has been applied to that has been absolutely mind blowing. And I know that you've got some examples of, uh, you know, that personalization at scale, basically. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's actually, um, uh, a friend of mine turned me on to, uh, in fact, we've got another session with Jordan. If you haven't seen the session with, with myself and Jordan, go watch that one. Um, but, uh, he turned me on to, um, he and Eric, uh, both turned me on to, uh, something called clay. Um, mm -hmm. and so I've actually spent the morning today, um, messing around with, with, with clay and, and, you know, you know, my background is running SDR teams and, and, and running uh, sales teams is, you know, we get this great data that comes in from, you know, our websites, from form fills, from whatever. Um, hey, we know that, you know, XYZ companies on the site. Great. Um, or I'm, you know, signals can actually help identify some of that. But, but also, what if you're targeting a company you've never heard of them? They've never heard of you before. They've never been there. Well, you can use this to leverage LinkedIn and uh, Apollo, and you can use a bunch of different data sources in here to really refine that data at scale. Mm -hmm. So now, um, one of the ways that we're using something like this is say, okay, great. These are all bad phone numbers, right? That we've been trying to call out on a reach or the emails bounced. Now let's use something like Clay to go ahead and, and refine the data so that... Um, you know, uh, as these come have come back with bad phone numbers, let's search 15 different places um, and compile it all, put it back into Salesforce and call out on it again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that mm -hmm. that research part of stuff, if you don't have something like signals that will automatically do the research for you, um, you need to do something uh, at the very least like uh, uh, like use a clay or use, or use this to do additional research. Um, it really helps to bring stuff in. Uh, really the is. other one, yeah, it goes back to being able to very specifically, you know, tell it what you what you need and right. and then iterate on that. And, yeah. um, you know, just as an example, uh, we're, you know, very I'm very specialized and we work with software companies and sales technology companies, you know, in the sales tech industry. And it's it's amazingly hard to find you know, people that are involved in that. And, and, and then the next layer is what they're actually concerned about. And if, if we can help them to solve a pain point. And well, so that's, that, that's a lot of work. And you could, it, you know, like I said, just a few months ago, you could have an army of outsourced, you know, workers trying to, you know, dig through uh, page by page to, to do this at an expensive cost. Now, what, you know, 19 bucks a month. <laughs> Well, let, let me show you one. This is a yeah. tool that uh, that we use. They're actually uh, Dan over at Wrench.ai is a good friend of mine. Um, mm -hmm. We use it here, and 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 what it is is Wrench goes and looks at your social your footprint out, out on the web, and so it's going to take, for example, David. It will take you, and it'll say, "Okay, great. What have you written? What have you posted out there? What articles reference you? What is your social presence?" it looks for you everywhere. And then it compiles a profile. Um, and so, um, we have profiles, for example, on everybody and, and, uh, um, David, we actually ran it on, on you. Um, and it, and the great thing about this is it throws it back into Salesforce. So this is actually, uh, our profile on you that you are a caring creative. Um, and it, it tells us right off the bat that, Hey, listen, if we're going to, if you're going to sell to David, uh, make sure that your solution's focused. Don't dump things down for him. I mean, I know he doesn't have a beard, but don't dump things down for him. Um, that uh, that if you engage with new information, um, he's going to track quickly. He's not going to want to want advice. Um, he's practical. He's empathetic. He's decisive. He's authentic. Um, a role model, if you will. So, David, uh, yeah. I said this to you, I think, last night to take a look at it. Um, how accurate, how accurate did they do? How, how do they do? I mean, it, it's honestly, it's, it's uncanny. Like, and, and, you know, I live, I've had to live with this, you know, for the last X number of years, I won't tell you how many, but you know, you know yourself better than probably anybody else. 
And, um, and you know, you get these things sometimes, even if you take a quiz or you, you know, um, other, other like assessment tests and stuff, and there's some stuff on there. Yeah. It, it's kind of accurate and you, you recognize, and then there's stuff, other stuff that you kind of blow off. This this is absolutely amazing in that there's nothing on there that I'm like no that's that's not accurate at all, and well, and it's it's scary good. I mean, here, it, and he, yeah. here's the other thing. I feel like with those assessments, like what Harry Potter house are you supposed to be in? Yeah, you you can figure them out enough to answer the questions kind of the way you want it oh. to be, right? Yeah. The great thing with honestly with that we found with wrench is uh, number one, it's happening behind the scenes. There's nothing you've had to do that's out there. And we all have some sort of digital footprint. And it, it, as I've talked to them, it's down to, hey, in the stuff you've written, do you ever use multiple exclamation marks? I mean, that's the type of, that's the level of stuff that they're looking at because an outgoing person tends to use more exclamation marks, right? Yeah. And and it helps put that in. So it, it just, it, it helps guide that um, along the way. So that, that's wrench.ai. That's We're coming amazing. up on time, but there's one more. There's a bonus one you wanted to talk about a little bit. Um, I do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this this is, you know, from a practical day by day perspective, this has been really game changing for me. Um, and it's a friend of mine started this company called Pattern, and they've been working on AI for for a long time. I mean, much, you know, it's not like a flash in the pan thing. And essentially, it 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 just plugs into my. Um, my Zoom calls and my different video conferencing, and uh, and ask you know it's permission based, but it's it's gathering the information that we take from the call and synthesizing that for me. It's putting it into a to do list. It's giving me um, you know all the different uh, important aspects of the call to make sure that I really stay on track with everything you know that we discussed and that I pr I promised. Now it does a lot more than this, but just having that as sort of it's almost like a co-pilot, um, and uh, and in helping me out so that I because obviously you know if you used to watch Seinfeld there was Kramerica Enterprise they had he had his he had his uh, intern who who was right next to him taking notes at all times we can't necessarily have that in the digital age and um, this this has been just an amazing uh, resource for me. Just out of curiosity, how do you find that different than some of the other transcribing apps and, and tools that you see out there? So the the gongs yeah. and the chorus, I think even SalesLoft has that functionality built into it as well. How do you how do you uh, how is it different? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it's it's um, there's very similar in 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 the the way that they're gathering data, and this this is not necessarily focused on sales and sales performance. It's just for everything. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, you know, those other tools most likely could be used for this. And mm -hmm. it's just that this, this is the one that I've been using and it, on a regular basis. So it, it works really well in that respect. I think what I love about that, um, because I've used those tools before and they've been great, whether it's a Voma or mm -hmm. chorus or gong or whatever, what I love that you mentioned is to be honest, the to-do list. Here's yeah. the to-do list. I mean, the, the idea of ha walking away and having something produced back to you, like, hey, here's what you need to do, is just awesome. Uh, yeah. It's, it's and the, the the last quick thing about that is, I I'm just going from call to call and throwing out all these ideas and stuff, and 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 like it, like on your dossier that that um, wrench made. Um, I I'm creative and and sort of mm -hmm. all over the place and. Um, you know, just to have some someone, quote unquote, next to me, who's, uh, you know, analytical, right brain, keeping track, organizing things, um, you know, I can't afford to hire a person to sit there with me. So this AI has, has become that, basically. Well, with the, with the price of this stuff, who can afford right. to have, right? Yeah. So it's wonderful. David, um, I'm... You know, maybe we should do something like this, like the top trends uh, at, at each demand gen summit here. Um, but uh, uh, I'm kind of excited. Like we weren't talking about this stuff. Most of the stuff we weren't talking about at all six months ago at our last demand gen summit. I'm curious to see even six months from now where we're going to be. So oh, I think it's a great idea. I've been doing this for seven years and I've never seen anything like the last, you know, 
three, five months or whatever since Jet GPT came out. So there's going to be a lot happening. We got to track it and, um, and, you know, how can it be useful for your audience? So I'm excited to talk with you more about it. One of the things that you mentioned, and we'll, we'll leave it with this, is at Tenbound, um, tenbound.com, you have kind of the market map yeah. of uh, um, there. And you kind of talked about, you know, you, you need to update it. Um, you need to update it, but honestly, uh, things are moving so fast. You haven't been able to, 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 to update it as fast as you want to with all this stuff. Um, go to, I, I'll give my plug for this. Go to tenbound.com, this market map. Uh, they update it as often as they can. Um, it's got the technologies. If you're looking for specific technologies, they have areas in there. Um, so, you, and you can even zoom in. I know this is small on the screen right here, but yeah. um, you can zoom in. You can see what technologies are out there. And also, feel free to reach out to to David as well and answer questions. He truly is a caring creative. Uh, wants to answer your questions. Wants to help you out. Um, where can they besides tenbound.com? Um, I know there's the chat on there. Um, uh, but, uh, That's right. yeah. uh, it, it's, it's the signals, it's the signals, uh, uh, tool on there that he's using, but, uh, oh, huge, what, uh we didn't even talk about that, but, uh, no, yeah, no. hit me on the well, chat and, and jump on the newsletter. I mean, that's, that's the, the best way to stay on top of all these things and, you know, all things, sales, tech, uh, people, process, technology, you know, everything's on there. So are you on LinkedIn and Twitter as well? Oh yeah. Yeah. Big time. So, <laughs> yep. uh, so I'll great. see you over there. Perfect. David, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And uh, look forward to talking to you again here soon. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Thanks.